Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and today we are gonna be discussing the number one 2024 web design trend called Bento Grids. Now, if you aren't familiar, Bento Grid comes from the term Bento Box, which is actually a Japanese lunch box, as we can see here. And these are modular lunch boxes that you can put together depending on what you're eating for the day. Now in web design, we can come to a website called Bento Grids and you get a ton of live examples of where Bento Grids are used. Most notably though, if we check out this one by the Apple Watch here, you know, Apple has been using Bento Grid design layouts in their live keynotes. And I think it's a great way to show a bunch of information in a small amount of space. And you'll also notice that there are some bigger boxes that are kind of highlighting some of their key features or specs for the Apple Watch. And you still have a lot of space for the other features as well. And in today's video, we are gonna be actually designing a very simple bento box here in Wix Studio. And we're gonna be using a design by Andrea Montini. And he is a fantastic designer. I've checked out his work um, and I will leave a link to all of his social media in the description below. So feel free to go check him out. I think he does really great work. But let's go ahead and jump into Wix Studio and we can start building our bento grid. So the first thing I kind of want to do is give us spacing all the way around our section here. So what we're gonna do is come down to position, come down to our padding, and maybe we add like 5% um, on all sides and we'll go ahead and apply that to all sides just like that. I think that looks great. And to start, what I want to do is just go ahead and add two rows here and it's going to split our section into two parts just like this however i'm not a big fan how of how big this cell is versus this one down here so what i'm actually going to do is grab the section itself and under the layout area we can press equalize grid or equalize horizontally and it's going to split them into two equal halves and i think that just looks a little bit cleaner now I do wanna have a little bit of space in between these two items here. So what I'm gonna do is, let's see what 36 pixels looks like. I think that looks pretty good. And we'll go ahead and leave it like that. Now for up here, I kinda of wanna split this into two, er or two different cells. So what I'm gonna do over here is I'm going to split vertically, just like that. So now we have two halves right here but I want the spacing to be the same. So if I select the section, all I want to do is add that 36 pixel gap in between here. And I think that looks pretty clean. And then down here, what I want to do is have uh, three items here. Uh, one thing we can do is split vertically and then we can split vertically again. However, the problem with this is if I select the section and press equalize horizontally, you're gonna notice it kind of shifts this one over. So I don't actually typically like doing that for this part. If I want to have three parts here, what I will actually do is come over to add, quick add, and we'll just drag out this container. We'll stretch this container and we're gonna add a CSS grid to it. So let's go ahead and apply that and we want a three by one grid. So now we can see we have the three parts and we can easily come down to the gap here and we can do 36 pixels. Now this is a pixel, it's not the pixel with the asterisk. So this one technically is not responsive. So we can actually switch this over to scale uh, and that's gonna give us the pixel with the asterisk. So it's gonna be a responsive value and it should match the values that we provided to the actual cell gaps over here. With this container, let's just remove the background color because we don't want that to show too much. And now we can go ahead and start filling in the content here. So for this top one, what I want to do is just add a box. We're gonna stretch it. For the corners, let's give it like a 12 pixel rounded edge. So it looks something like that. And for the background color, let's go ahead and make it a tad lighter. So we're just gonna bump this up a little bit and we'll press apply. Fantastic. 
for this one, we're gonna have an image on the top and some text down below. So let's go ahead and start with the image. So we'll come over to media and we're gonna select this one right here. Now for this one, it is an SVG file. So we're just going to kind of position it like this and make it quite a bit bigger. We want it to be about this size and we'll kind of place it right about here. Underneath, we need to add text. So what I'm gonna do is just come over to text and I'm gonna get a heading five element here. We'll go ahead and center it. And for this text, I'm gonna set it to base new font. And I'm just gonna say invest as low as, we'll just say a hundred dollars or a hundred USD because I don't, this is just a trial font. And then we're gonna add just a very simple paragraph underneath it. So we'll just do something like this. We'll make the paragraph maybe like 13 pixels and we'll make this like a lighter gray. We'll grab both of these elements and we'll stack them together. And I want this docked to the bottom and not the top. And we'll go ahead and set this to be like 10% from the bottom. Okay, perfect. I think this looks really good. So what I want to do with this now is go ahead and copy this and we're gonna paste it over into this cell. Let's go ahead and stretch it. And I'm gonna change this vector art really quickly. And what I will notice is that the SVG file is not, doesn't look centered because of the shadows. So I'm just going to kind of adjust this manually, even though it's probably not gonna look the best as I'm doing it. <laughs> um, and then we'll just change the text here. So now we're already done with the top two. And for the bottom three, what we're gonna do is for this left one, it's gonna be a green one. So let's add our box here. We'll stretch it. We'll give the corners the same radius as the ones above. And for the color, I'm just gonna add our color really quickly here and I'll apply it. Inside of this box, it's gonna be the same thing as up here. We're just gonna have an image on the top. So we'll go to our media. We'll grab the image. Again, it's an SVG file, so we'll make it a little bit bigger. We'll pull it into the container, can make it a little bit bigger, maybe not that big. And we'll kind of just place it right about here because again, it has that shadow. So we're just gonna leave it right about there. Um, and then let's go ahead and just grab this text element from up here and we'll paste it down here. Now this one, we don't have as much room. So we're just gonna position it similar to this and we'll change the text. And then for over here, we're gonna add a container. But for this container, we're going to remove the background color completely. So we'll stretch it, remove the background color, and then we're gonna apply a CSS grid. So we're gonna do a one by two, so it kind of splits it in half. Um, and we could even add the 36 pixel gap that we had above, and we'll set it to a responsive value. Uh, for this one, um, we're gonna have a container. And this container is gonna be like a, have a rounded edge. So let's go ahead and add the 12 pixels here. Perfect. And then for the color, we're gonna choose like a black color. Um, but instead of the black, let's do like a very, very, very dark blue. Just slightly blue. There we go. I think that looks pretty clean. And then inside of this container, we're just going to add our uh, image here. We're going to place it right about here. Uh, we can resize it down just a smidge. And then for the bottom right corner, uh, we'll make sure it's at the bottom right corner. And for the bottom right corner, let's unlink the uh, corner radius and we'll make sure that we have a 12 pixel radius at the bottom. That way the image and the box look like they are lined up together and there's nothing, and the image doesn't have like a sharp edge. And I think that looks a little bit cleaner. But let's go ahead and grab this text element and we'll place it down here at the bottom grid cell, place it at the left, and we'll change the text to secure and reliable. Perfect. And let's just extend this out as well. I think this looks pretty clean. And before we continue, I kind of want to 
grab this cell. So I'm gonna grab this cell and I want to raise the height. So let's just go ahead and grab the bottom of the section and raise the height. Um, I will say that did kind of mess up the top area here because I did forget to split this into a grid. So what I'm gonna do is apply a grid to this top container. We're gonna do a two or a one by two. Uh, this graphic needs to be in the top cell. And then this content, we'll, we'll just make sure that it's in the bottom cell. Perfect. And we'll go ahead and do that to this one over here as well. Now we can grab the bottom of the section, raise it up a little bit. And for this, I also want to um, set these to minimum content. Uh, this one I'm gonna set to a viewport width and maybe we'll do something like 22. And for this container, let's set this to minimum content. And now let's also make sure that nothing has like a really weird like margin on the bottom. Like this one right here, for some reason has a 38% margin on the bottom and we don't want that. Okay. So now we should be able to grab the section and raise it up and we should be left with something that looks like this. I am going to push this down a little bit, um, but realistically what you should do is split this into a grid again. But let's go ahead and just move on to the last box here. What we're gonna do is similar to what we have been doing is we're gonna add a container. Let's go ahead and stretch it. We're gonna remove the background color. And what we're gonna to want to do is something similar to this over here. Um, so we're going to apply a CSS grid and we're gonna split this into a one by two. Okay, I'm gonna copy this text and paste it over here on the bottom one. We'll just bring it down to the bottom one really quickly. Let's change the text to 100% integrate integrated and with the container selected we're going to set the top one to viewport and we're going to set this to like 22 so i believe that's what i set this one to and then we'll also apply that 36 pixel gap and we'll make it responsive perfect for this top area we're going to split this up even more so what we're going to need to do is add another container we're gonna make, we wanna make sure it's in the top part of the grid and we'll stretch it. Once again, we will remove the background color. And for this one, we're gonna want to split this into two parts again. So we're gonna do a one by two grid with a 36 pixel gap, just like that. Now for this top grid here, I want to split this even further. So we're gonna add another container we're gonna make sure it's in the top area of this grid and we're gonna stretch it. Now for this, we're gonna remove the background color and we're gonna apply another grid here. So we're gonna do a two by one for this one with a 36 pixel gap in between. And then for this one, I kind of want to make this an even square. So to do something like that, what we're gonna do is grab this row and we're gonna set this to a viewport value. Now we'll see that it is a 9.6 VW. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that, but I can now come over to this column here and we can set this to a 9.6 VW. And now we have a perfect square here. Inside of this perfect square, what I want to do is add one of our images here. So we're gonna come over to our images. We're gonna add this and we're going to place this inside of our square here. Perfect. We're gonna send it to the top left and we can expand this until it's full. Perfect. For this area right over here, what I want to do is add a container inside of this. So we'll just add this here. Let's go ahead and stretch the container. We are gonna to wanna to make sure it's in the right column. We don't want it to be in this one right over here. Uh, let's go ahead and round the edges. So we'll set this to 12 pixels, something like that. I think that looks pretty clean. And inside of this, what I want to add is a repeater. So it's gonna look a little bit crazy for a split second, um, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set this to be three across. Uh, we'll leave the pixel gap as eight pixels. And then what we're gonna want to do is 
grab this item and inside of this item, what we're gonna to want to do is just simply add one of these SVG files. Uh, we don't want it to be that big. So what we're gonna do is with the aspect ratio locked, let's just set this to like 64 and see how big it gets. I think that looks pretty good. So what we're gonna do is align it to the center. And then what we're gonna do is grab the height and we're gonna remove the height completely. Okay. And then we're also going to grab the repeater itself. We're gonna turn on advanced sizing and we're gonna set the width to max content. And it got super small. So let's apply it here. Um, but let's grab the repeater items, the graphic itself. And you'll see that it, it got really small and that's because it went, I did not set this to be, uh, I forgot to set this to a fixed sizing. So now we should have something that looks like this. Um, but what I will say is maybe that's still a little bit too small. So maybe we'll do like 72 and see how that looks. I think that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and grab the repeater now. And we're gonna place it right here in the middle. But now that it's docked to this container, what I want to do with the container selected is set the overflow content from show to hide. So now we should have something that, something that looks like this. And we're just gonna change out the vector art here really quickly to MailChimp. Perfect. Now inside of this container, I do wanna add one more thing. So what we're gonna do is come over to add and we're gonna grab this gradient color or gradient image here. We're gonna place this inside of the container and we're going to stretch it. Um, I will say, I think it appears below the repeater. So what we're gonna do is grab this image and put it above the repeater. And with the focal point, what we're gonna do is move this all the way over to the right. There we go. So now it looks like it's kind of fading off a little bit and I think that looks pretty good. Now what I want to do is go ahead and grab this container we're gonna copy it and we're just gonna bring it down here and paste it uh, because with this one, we're gonna have basically a second version of this. So we'll go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and temporarily hide the gradient here. We'll grab the repeater and we'll bring this down right over here. And for this one, I think we are gonna have, let's just do like four, let's do like five items across and we'll extend it out just like that. And we'll align everything to the start. And let's just add a couple items. Okay. Let's go ahead and change out these vector arts really quickly. And now we can go ahead and show that gradient again. And we also will just go ahead and make sure that this containers overflow is set to hide. Perfect. And that is basically how you build a very simple bento grid system here inside of Wix Studio. So as you can see, it's not too hard to build a bento grid system here in Wix Studio. The main thing you need to remember is using cells to kind of create the frame of it. Then you can use containers to further divide your grid system into other grid systems. And then you can just fill it in with content. It's not too complicated, which is really nice. I love how Wix Studio makes it super simple to do this. But that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix Studio content coming out really soon. Thank you all again, and I will see you on the next one.